Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. I am so excited about this week's video. I am starting to change up how I'm filming videos. You're still gonna get meal prepping, you're still gonna get lots of recipes, but we are going to be doing some more homemaking, home decor, DIYs, clean with me's, lots of mixed content like I used to do. And this week is the first video in this little change up that we're working on. So something I had on my to-do list this week was to make my own pumpkin creamer. You guys, this turned out so delicious and it's really, really simple to make. I used some of the pumpkin I actually canned last year along with some heavy cream, some pumpkin pie spice, and extra cinnamon because I love cinnamon. And then I use some vanilla stevia along with a sugar-free um, maple syrup. But you could use regular sugar, you could use any type of vanilla syrup if you want to, you could use regular maple syrup, whatever you like to use to sweeten it. It's really, really flexible because you're gonna taste it to see how sweet you want it. I'll give you the measurements that I used below and then you can follow along and make your own. And of course, right off the bat, I had to make a drink to use this in. I found this really adorable jar to store in at Hobby Lobby for a couple dollars. And I will be remaking this throughout this fall season. It's just so yummy. And because it's made with heavy cream, you can also whip it up into a cold foam that works great on top of iced coffees as well. I have an incredible fall dinner recipe that you are going to want to add to your meal prep this week for sure. I am so excited to tell you that Wild Grain is this week's video sponsor. Wild Grain is the first ever Bake From Frozen subscription box for sourdough bread, fresh pastas, and artisanal pastries. You all know how much I love sourdough. With Wild Grain, you're going to get all the benefits without the hard work. Unlike typical supermarket bread, Wild Grain uses a slow fermentation process that can be easier on your belly, richer in nutrients and antioxidants, and can help lower your blood sugar spikes. Freezer to table in 25 minutes, every item bakes in 25 minutes or less, so you can enjoy homemade, quality whenever you'd like. One thing I know is that I'll never get bored because I'm able to build my own box. Wild Grain is constantly adding new seasonal and limited time special items to try when you build your own box. I cannot recommend Wild Grain enough. Their sourdough is absolutely top notch. I couldn't stop eating it. It was so delicious. And if you want to check out Wild Grain, you can be sure to click on the link in the description box and and use my code Adeline Zook to get $30 off your first box, plus you'll get free croissants in every box. And you're gonna be thanking me later for those. So great. And thanks again to Wild Grain for sponsoring today's video. I'm excited to share a fantastic pasta recipe with you just in time for fall. This creamy pumpkin pasta sauce is going to be one that you are going to go back to time and time again through this fall season. We're gonna use the wild grain fettuccine. And you guys, I have never tasted such fresh, delicious pasta coming out of my own kitchen. This was amazing. I wanna try making my own pasta at some point, but until then, I've got wild grain that can offer some really fresh, yummy noodles that I am ready to slurp up. So the noodles cook from frozen in about five minutes. So I just threw them into the pot while I got my sauce started and it was just that simple. So I let them cook while I threw some butter into the pan. You're going to let that butter melt down and then you're going to add in some fresh pressed garlic. This just pops with that pumpkin spice. It is so delicious 
And I'm gonna keep saying it's so delicious just because this has truly become one of our new favorite pasta sauces. Everyone in the household was eating this and had smiles on their face. My husband couldn't stay out of it either. It was just so good. While the garlic cooks up, I went ahead and drained the fettuccine. And then once the garlic was toasted a little bit, I poured very slowly into the pan some heavy cream. And again, this recipe will be linked in the description box as usual. Once the cream has had some time to simmer, you're gonna add in some fresh grated parm. This really brings the flavor up a notch. You're gonna slowly stir that in. I did turn my heat back just a little bit to allow the parm to have time to melt and just really bond in with the cream and let everything thicken. Next, we have the star of the show, the pumpkin. And this brings not only a beautiful flavor, but a beautiful color to this sauce. I just love how swirly it all looked as I was stirring it in and it helps to thicken the sauce as well so that it clings really nicely to those fettuccine noodles. To give a bit of seasoning to the sauce, we're going to add some salt, some pepper, and just a bit of nutmeg to complement that pumpkin but it's definitely not the sweet nutmeg that you might think from like a pumpkin pie this is way down the savory line of things and it just goes so well with it once the sauce flavors have had time to combine i went ahead and grabbed my fettuccine and i just took some tongs to really get the fettuccine coated so well with the sauce So like I said, we are changing up the content a bit here on my channel. And this week I wanted to start decorating for fall and just getting out some of my decor. I was swapping out candles, getting them lit. Everyone in our house was so excited to smell pumpkin and cinnamon and apple in the home with the delicious candles. And this is the second batch of sunflowers that I have bought so far this year. And I am so amazed at how long they last. The last bouquet I made of them, I think lasted two and a half weeks. So if you want something that is really inexpensive, that's gonna last you a while, I can't recommend sunflowers enough. Plus they're just so mesmerizing. They're huge and just so sunshiny and beautiful sitting in your kitchen or on your table. And at my supermarket, they are about two to four dollars for about three of these large sunflowers. So I can get a lot of use out of them, a lot of joy and enjoyment out of them with only a few dollars. on my to-do list for this week was to start getting out some fall things, just giving some little touches here and there of fall. And so I got out all of my fall decor. Whenever I decorate, I usually do more like my kitchen area and my dining room and like the area that we are in. Um, I don't do a lot of the living room and stuff like that. I'm not gonna show you everything that I have sitting here, but I am gonna pick out at least two, maybe three things that I wanna show um, you guys that are just kind of specialty pieces. Also, you might be wondering why I'm doing this because this is my main channel. I have a second channel that I often do this type of thing on and there's going to be an announcement video very soon of some changes and things happening, but for today, you get to enjoy both meal prepping, cooking, and all the things in one video. So, the things I wanna pull out are 
these, well, I've got like a couple things, but these candlestick holders. And actually this week I was going to pick up some candlesticks to put the in these, uh, but I totally forgot to. So I'm just gonna have to put these on my table today. But my dad actually made these for my mom when they were dating. And I just think that they are so special and so autumn, fall, autumnal feeling. They're gonna work great with my fall decor and my mom just gave me these. So I was like, ah, they're so perfect for this time of year and just to work out great. The other thing that I have over here and I'll insert a closer clip of them, but it's these spice books. Yes, you heard me right. These are spice jars. I found these um, about a month ago, I think, at an antique store and my jaw about fell on the floor. I was like, are you serious? For those of you that don't know, I am an avid reader. I love to read. And these were just precious. They're kind of chipped up, which is so cute and perfect. They're gonna look so great up here on my shelves here in my kitchen. They obviously bring together a very like fall, back to school type feeling, but then we also have the spices. They were, I think, used at one point. They look like they probably were used. They have little corks in the bottom that would keep the spices inside. So, so precious. Just the sweetest little addition. And then I have one more thing I'm gonna grab over here. So this picture, my mom actually gifted me. They're getting ready to go back to Florida for the winter. That's where they um, work at a live-in boys camp. So they were here for the summer. So as a little parting gift, she gave me this. This is from the Hearth in Hand collection at Target. And I was eyeing this up and just think that it's so precious. And I actually had picked up the mug that goes with this. And my mom knew that I got this mug and just really loved it. So she gave me this sweet parting gift of this. So I'm gonna incorporate this somewhere or I may end up using it somewhat through the fall and even winter season. It's such a beautiful color that can go with that. So besides all of that, we're gonna start decorating. Um, and I think we're gonna start out by putting my fall cups away. You all saw me taking the spring cups out if you watch my second channel. And so now we're gonna replace the spring and summer florals with some fall um, feeling mugs. I know I tell you all this every single year, but fall is just my favorite, favorite, favorite season to decorate for, the types of food. I just enjoy it so much, the clothing, the the fashion, I guess you would say, that goes with it, the coziness, it's just, oh, I live for it. I love it so much. As much as I would love to move south again or live in Florida with my parents at some point, I know that fall is something I would miss just terribly moving to a place without seasons and I just can't wait for all of the cozy campfires and the leaves to start really changing color. We're kind of a little bit ahead of it by doing this decorating now, but I think it's just gonna help to welcome in that season. So I know I raved about these little spice containers, <laughs> but I am not kidding. I, these are just honestly one of my most favorite decor pieces I have ever owned and even my sister-in-laws were just ooing and aahing over them. Everybody's been just really enjoying seeing them and they are just so beautiful to me and I think that there's something I'm probably going to carry in to the winter season unless I find something in my thrifting or antiquing that tops these books. They're just so, so cute. And when you realize that they're spice containers, that just takes the cake. It makes them even more precious. I have fully jumped on the mushroom train this season. Everyone, everywhere, all stores seem to have mushrooms everywhere. Um, and I think they've been slowly becoming more popular over the last couple of years but I've really noticed them a lot this year. And so I did get a couple of velvet, I guess is what you would call it, velvet mushrooms. And I found one that is amber glass. 
And that's something that I've been incorporating into my fall decor is looking for amber glass pieces. I believe I'm saying that right. It's whenever it's more of a brown glass. And I just think that's so beautiful and pulls in a very warm tone into your fall decor. So I found this dried floral and I wanna get some more. We actually have a local floral farm that I can go to and pick out dried florals for the fall season. And so I'm considering doing that. Um, I'm not sure, we're getting ready to do a little bit of traveling too. So at some point I'd like to get over there, but I did find this bouquet of dried florals on clearance at TJ Maxx. So that was such a score. I think I paid $8 for that. And if you know that real um, dried florals can be pricey depending on where you're getting them from. So being able to get a nice mixture of real florals, I felt like that was such a score. So this little snail on the top shelf, um, I found it over the summer and I just think it's so adorable. It is actually a flower pot, so maybe at some point I'll plant something in it this next spring. But I thought it was such a cute spring and summer decor piece and I just couldn't let it go for the fall. So I decided to hang on to it for the fall. Um, we'll see if it gets tucked away for the winter decor. But I have just been so enjoying it and when I look up there and see it, it just brings a little smile to my face. It's just so cute. I want to tell you all to definitely check out Hobby Lobby and other places whenever the season is over. Last year I was able to find some really neat pieces including this creamer and sugar set and I believe I paid two dollars for it um, at Hobby Lobby and so it is amazing what you can find at the end of the season for only a few dollars. You just have to wait until the next year to obviously use it but for me I think it's actually kind of fun because I open up my box of you know seasonal decor and I find new pieces and it feels like Christmas it feels like I'm opening up a fun little gift to myself I decided to tuck these sweater pumpkins into my laundry room. I put these in the same spot last year actually, but I think it's just a cute little nod to all the sweaters that get washed through the fall season, all the cozy clothes that we are going to be passing through our laundry room to have these fun sweater pumpkins. Last year I didn't have this little sitting area in my kitchen. We had a table here. And so I decided to go ahead and take advantage of this little spot next to this chair. My husband and children sit in this area constantly. It's an everyday sitting spot and even friends and family that are over while I'm cooking hang out in that spot. It's just the perfect little sitting nook and works so great in this space. I'm so happy with all the little touches of warm oranges and browns and oh, the kitchen just smelled so great and it just makes me more excited to plant mums outside to get my deck all set and ready to go. I just can't wait. Let me know in the comments, have you got out some of your fall decor? Have you started to make yourself some pumpkin drinks are you in the mood for the fall season let me know if you're already decorating in the comments below
Another thing on my to-do list this week was to get some pickles made. I thought I really wasn't going to do much canning and then I got bit by the bug. If you all have been watching for a long time, you know that I love home preservation. I love home canning and freezing and obviously you all have seen my cellar. I am an avid canner and this year I was like I'm just going to do corn. I'm not going to do anything crazy and then I realized we didn't have many pickles and then my daughters ate the last two jars of pickles that I had on the shelf. The pickle, the dill spears and so I decided to go on a little hunt and check out a few local markets to see if anyone had any pickling cucumbers um, left. Was there any, you know, bushels left? Because if you don't know, we are at the end of the growing season for cucumbers, definitely. And I was able to find the last couple baskets at a market and I was able to do up some cucumbers. So I'm gonna leave this recipe below because it is incredibly simple and it makes a very good dill um, spear or slices or half pickles. I actually did some large jars then. I didn't film it, but I did half pickles. And so you can really do anything you want. You could even turn it into a relish if you want to. So all it takes is some dill seed and some mustard seed and some garlic cloves and you divide these things out into how many jars you're doing. And then there is a brine that's going to go on top of everything as well, but the seasoning part of it is divided by jar. And then you kind of have to guess on the brine. You may run out of brine depending on how full your jars are packed with cucumbers. So we just divide it up like this. And actually my daughters were helping me since we did a couple of batches of pickles this week. They helped to measure out the seasoning that we need. Along with the dill seed, the mustard seed, the garlic clove, you're also going to put a couple of the black pepper corns in each jar as well. Now, I like to can this recipe with a monk fruit sweetener. You do not have to use sugar if you want to because there's a lot of vinegar in this. And so it only takes a few tablespoons of sweetener just to kind of give a good flavor. So you are able to swap out that sweetener if you want to. And I also always use the pink Himalayan salt. And then I was telling my daughters that this year, if they want to, they can drink the pickle juice as an electrolyte drink because it has the mineral salt already in it and it works perfect as an electrolyte drink. I don't know if they will, but I'm going to see if I can get them into doing that. <laughs> so you wanna put the sweetener, the vinegar, the water, and the salt onto the stove top in a kettle and just really get that cooking up and hot. You wanna dissolve your sweetener. You also wanna dissolve your salt the best you can. Mine still usually has a little bit of mineral salt kind of in the bottom of the kettle so I'll stir it as I'm filling my jars with brine. Pickles are a great starter canning project as well as like jams and jellies. They're just very very simple. They're not overly complicated. So once the brine was boiled up then I started to fill my jars and I just filled them until uh, maybe a half inch headspace. I'm not too picky when it comes to something with this much vinegar in it because my jars almost always seal. They do very well. Um, and then I'm just going to put my lid on and screw the ring on and I'm going to stack these in two layers since they're pint jars in my water bath canner. And this is where you can make the decision. You can kind of go at your own discretion on how you want to do this but I actually just bring my water just to a boil and then I turn the water off I let the jar sit in the water bath canner for probably three four minutes if they're pint jars and then I take them out and that helps me to have a very crunchy pickle I have a 
horse and buggy Mennonite neighbor that taught me that. And I used to water bath them at a rolling boil for five to 10 minutes and I got super mushy pickles and I wanted a way to just keep them with a nice little crunch. And so she taught me that method, just bringing it to a boil, turning the water off, letting it sit for a couple of minutes and then taking them out. But if you would prefer to water bath them for five to 10 minutes, you can definitely do that if you feel a little bit better about boiling them longer, but just know you're gonna get a softer pickle. So that is what all I got filmed for you guys this week, and I'm so glad you came along with me throughout my week and just joined me in some of my projects. I would love to hear feedback on what you think of this new layout of video. Let me know in the comments below. If you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and give this video a like, and I'll see you guys in my next video.